our dear viewers and listeners, we greet you all in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to today's Bible study. We invite you to invite someone to join us today. And as you do that, let's take this moment to dedicate this session to God in prayer. Let's pray. Precious Lord, we thank you yes, Lord. for your wisdom at work in us. For it is you that works in us both to do, mm -hmm. to will, and to teach your word. Mm -hmm. Breathe upon your word. Yes, Lord. Make it alive in their ears. Yes, Lord. Cause it to bear fruit yes, Lord. that they may run with this life of the gospel yes, Lord. wherever they go. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Today's text we will take from the book of Romans chapter 2. From verse 17 to verse 24. And the Bible says, Indeed, you are called a Jew, and rest on the law, and make your boast in God, and know his will, and approve the things that are excellent, being instructed out of the law, and are confident that you yourself are a guide to the blind, a light to those in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babies, having the form of knowledge and truth in the law. You, therefore, who teach another, do you not teach yourself? You who preach that a man should not steal. Do you steal? You who say do not commit adultery. Do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols. Do you rob temples? You who make your boast in the law. Do you dishonor God by breaking the law? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. As it is written. We are still embarking on this journey where Paul brings to us the not so good news so that we are able to lay the foundation for him to soar up into the realms of grace. I liken this yeah. to building yeah. a structure. The higher the building will go, the stronger the foundation has to be. So what he is now doing is to lay the foundation of how far we have fallen without God without Christ. And on that, after chapter 3, he will then build to take us to the realm of our justification by faith. What he wants us to understand in the scripture is that all of us. And last week we saw a certain category of people. Those are the people who have not had the gospel. Those who are not under the law. 
Tebali wansi wa mateka. And we understood that they are also condemned. Netutegena tinabu musango guba singa. Now in verse 17. Murwe kumino musango. He turns the attention. Kate au achuki de. To those who are under the law. Ayogera banabali wansi wa mateka. Those who have knowledge of God. Ngabe iba manji katonda. And he says indeed you are a Jew. Nabagamba we wawu ulimu yudaya. And he in this, he is not disputing anything. But he's laying out a number of factors. In verse 17 and 18, he will lay down the four privileges that come to someone who has knowledge of the law. And then in verse 19 and verse 20, he lays down down the four practices. Having them having received the law. What is it that they do with this law? He lays down the four practices. And then he lays down four charges. And then finally, he lays down the judgment. Explaining why they are actually judged. And that is what we we'll find in verse 23 to 24. Verse 17 to 18. Paul says, Indeed, you are called a Jew. And rest on the Lord. And make your boast in God. When you meet it is and know his will. And approve the things that are excellent being instructed out of the law. No So what is he trying to say here? He begins to list what the privileges are, what the the advantages are of one who has the law. So the first privilege he lists is that they rest on the law. In other words, they rely upon the word of God. And it is this word that God had handed over to Moses which now provided them with the special revelation which other people did not have. So they have an advantage because through God's word they have a special revelation of who God is. And here Paul points out the word law so many times. As a matter of fact, from chapter 2, from verse 12 to verse 27, we see the word law mentioned 19 times. And from chapter, verse 12 to verse 16 that we saw last week, Ten times he mentions the word law. Today, we see it mentioned five times. What is he trying to refer to? He's referring to the law handed down to Moses. And this law can basically be broken down into three streams. Number one is what we call the moral law, which describes how the Jew ought to live. Or someone who is under the law how they ought to live. Then the second one is what we call the ceremonial law. That is how one under the law ought to worship and approach God. And the third aspect is what we call the civil law. So that is described how the Jew ought to function 
as a society or as a nation. Dio gera kungeria awiyuda yange guange gere jebai to jebai take duo kwe isamu. How they ought to relate to one another. Nenge jebai no kola gana bokana boka. And this together brings in context what we have as the law. Dio na wa mubi ebizi ba nebi kodi amate kanga to gamani. And the it's not just the Ten Commandments. It is the entire law as handed down to Moses. And this had a number of snippets of why it was given. And they having received the law now have a special revelation which other people do not have. So what is the second privilege? that the Jew have. First, they have received the law. The second is that they now boast in God. Why? Because this brings them to claim a special relationship with God. While they have his revealed will. So now through the law, they know his holy character. So they have a relationship that people outside the law don't have. Thirdly, they know his will. And what does that mean? That means God has revealed how they ought to live. God wants, has now opened up on how he wants them to go about life. How they ought to conduct themselves as individuals, as a family, as a society. Number four, they approve the law. Paul says they approve the things that are essential or the things that are excellent. So this more than just no possessing and knowing they approve what is in it. So they affirm that these teachings are authentic. They affirm that these teachings are beneficial. They affirm that these teachings are essential for their life. And this is where we draw the line. Because now that the fundamentals have been laid, the question we ask ourselves, what was the purpose of the law? What was the purpose of this law that was handed down to them? Number one, it was it reveals the character and the attributes of God. So through the law, you are able to understand attributes of, about God. Him being sovereign. Him being holy. Him being righteous. So it, there is so much about God. And this directed the Jew to have a perspective of God that someone outside the law would not have. So the second purpose of the law was to reveal the sinfulness of man. You see, it is like the laws that we have today. So in Uganda, if you are driving a car, you are meant to keep left. So if you drive on the right hand side, you are against the law. So the law now comes in place to explain to you 
how you need to conduct yourself. Katamateka mwegajido kunyo nyolo kuyigiri zengiri joino kwe isamu. So in the same way, mungeri yemu, when it came to the law of God, it came to draw the line on what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. So now the law in a certain way by revealing the sinfulness of man prepares the way prepares the heart of man to be able to receive the gospel. You say, until you understand that you are a sinner, then you have no need for the Savior. Until you understand that you are sick, you have no need for a doctor. Yes, you could have him as your friend. But you needing their attention to address your situation will not arise. Until you are actually sick. You see, there are sometimes that we have situations and we fail to understand how grave they are. Until we, this is brought to our attention. And this happens by way of so many things. Yesterday I had a, a, a discussion with someone. And we were discussing about pain. And discussing on a theme, pain the gift that nobody wants. And we looked at so many scenarios. But, and we realized that without pain, there are certain things that would actually eat us and kill us without us having to understand that they actually exist. So if a disease came to you, and for you to be aware that that disease is there, there will be a pain inflicted. And suddenly you have experienced a pain in a particular area. And therefore seek out a doctor to understand what the cause of that pain is. And then after a diagnosis is performed, they are able to zero in on what is actually causing the pain. So if you just treat the pain, you will not treat the root cause. The point I want to drive home is this. The law brings the awareness of sin and then drives us to seek out a savior as the remedy for our sin. So the fact that we see here, the law is our tutor to lead us to Christ. This is what we see Paul expounding in Galatians chapter 3 from verse 24. And says the law is our teacher. It is our instructor. So the law orders us. Having now discovered that you are a sinner. And there is no way you can perfectly obey the requirements of the law. It then guides you to the one who has perfectly met all the requirements of the law. And when you have faith in him and his finished work, then he 
perfects you in righteousness that he achieved under the law. So the fourth benefit that we see concerning the law is the fact that the law acts as a restraint to evil in society. If we imagine a society without laws. One time when I was growing up, we had this football match. And we decided that there would be no rules. There are no laws. Everybody do what you want. Believe me. Within five minutes of the game, I stopped enjoying it. Because some were carrying the ball like it was rugby, yet it was football. At as I tried to dribble, somebody kicked me in the groin, and I couldn't scream that I had been tackled. Because there was no law. And the people were going to be the people who were going to be the people the game. Because all the had been removed. That is the same thing that happens with the life. When the laws are removed, then all restraints are removed. So people can kill, people can steal, everything can, anything is allowed. But once you have the law in place, then it acts as a restraint to evil in society. And I must add that this restraint is limited. Because if that is not the case, then we would not have, be having law breakers. The fifth benefit of the law, it reveals the will of God. It points us to the center of God's will. It shows us what God's expectations are with how we relate with one another. How we should teach our children. How we should relate with our parents. How we should work. It shows us how we should be content. How we should use our lips. How we should use our mouth. How we should use our lives. So it acts as a moral compass which points us to the center of God's will. It reveals to us the things that are essential. It brings to us the knowledge of what God's will is all about. So we know what pleases him and what does not. Now, if you are a Jew and you have received this law, it places you at a point of advantage. So having knowledge of the law, then Paul points out the practices of this law. From verse 19 to verse 20. Where he says, I'm confident that you yourself are a guide to the blind. A light to those in the darkness. An instructor to the foolish. A teacher of babies. Having the form of knowledge and the truth in the law. 
Oline chokula bilake echa magezi nature mazima mumateka. So this knowledge okumanya kuno brings confidence. Kule eto obuvu mumugwe to the one that receives this law. Eliyo ye ne afuna mateka gado. Because they have the law. Kubanga bawe wa mateka. They are using this law. Bagakozesa. They are even telling others. Baigi bagamba ne nabala about it. Kumateka gado. But going that full length Na ye mukugenda mvugazi bwa git to others. Okubulira abalala. Paul points out that they have not applied this same law to themselves. Paul agamba anti bale med bale meddo kutambulira mateka galonga bo. He not one you are a guide to others, another a guide to the blind. Aga abaita oli musale wa abazibe ba maso. Basically the blind refers to those who don't have the law. Omuzibe wa maso wano bogera ko lya talira mateka. So they teach those who are without the law. Baigiriza abo abali wa bweri wa mateka. They bear witness to those who ha- don't have the special revelation about the written word of God. Bajulira neri aba abatali na kupikulibwa kwanja olo kuchigambo cha katonda. And Paul points out also that they are a light in the darkness. Paul era abagamba nti gwe musana ogwakira mu kizikiza. And this is not physical darkness. This is spiritual darkness. Kino kizikiza si kya mubiri, kino kizikiza kya muuyu. You see Israel, Israeli, according to Isaiah 42, ngogenze mu Isaiah na mu bibi, verse 6, uromuka is referred to as the light to the nations. Eitibwa ekitanga la kya mawanga. And then Jesus Christ Christo Yesu becomes the crown of it all. Nafuka atenkulongo ya Jonah 8:12. Yokana munana 12. He comes and declares that I am the light of the world. Agamba nze musana gwansi. And then speaking to his disciples. Kati wachu kidaba ya baigirizwa abe. He tells us nafa tugamba that you timwe are the light mwe musana of the world. Gwesi. So He then sends us out as his disciples. Ah tutumo gende bweru ngaba igirizwa abe. To preach the light of the gospel. Tubulire kitangala change to the world that is in darkness. Eriye se eri muchizikiza. And that is why we have to preach this gospel. Cheva tulino kujibulire njiri. So the Jews who had received the law bana bayuda ya abawe bwa mateka were confident in this benyumiriza mutu they had the light and everyone else was in darkness tibobe bali ne kitangala abasigadde bali mu kizikiza and therefore it was upon them kati chali kubbo to act as instructors to the foolish o kubera abayigirizwa baba talina bagezi now foolish is the greek word aphrone Basically it does not mean they did not have intellectual knowledge. Remember this was during the Greek uh, ascent era. Where disciples who sat at the feet of known philosophers like Aristotle and Plato believed that they had wisdom yet in the sight of god because they did not have the law of god there is an aspect of the will of god there is an aspect of wisdom that they did not have Kubate baama nyakwagala kwa katonda waliwe echikwa cha magezi chebatali na They may have had the intellect Bainzo kwa bali na magezi agamu But mbutu. they lacked the mind of God Na yendo za nokutesa kwa katonda teba kumanya And in the eyes of God they were foolish Mumaso ga katonda ngalaba babasiru So now the this Jews who have the law katibana aba yudai abawe ba mateka become the instructors to these foolish people be bafuka abasale ba abantu bana abatalina magezi to these people that are ignorant bana abatalina kumanya that are unwise and unbelieving abatalina magezi tebali munda kokiriza so paul also points out paul yera alaga that in them having the law timukuwe ba mateka they act as teachers of those who are immature ne bafuka ba igirizwa ba abachali abato the bible calls them babes bible yaita ba yaita bana abato they are lacking the knowledge of god's word 
Remember, this was an instruction that God gave them at the point when they received the law in Deuteronomy chapter 6. From verse 4. Verse 6 to verse 7. He tells them you shall diligently teach your sons. Talk to them concerning the law. So they have this practice of being instructors of teaching those who are mature and then having that privilege of knowledge they have the embodiment of truth so they are able to guide they act as a light. They act as correctors or instructors. And they act as teachers for those who are immature based on the fact that they have the law. So, having known that, he then comes to the charges against them. In verse 21 and verse 22, he says, You therefore, who teach another, do you not teach yourself? In other words, what you are applying to others, are you applying it to yourself? You see, the Bible defines the word of God as a double-edged sword. It cannot apply to others are not you. It is a message that works for both those that are hearing and the one that is delivering. So it cannot apply one way. It applies both ways. So he comes back to them and says, okay, you are telling the others what they ought to do. <clears throat> now let's turn the light to you. Do you teach yourself? Are you teaching others and remaining ignorant? Are you teaching them to apply the principles of God's word? And yet you are not living by the same principles. And he goes on to say, you who preach that a man should not steal, do you steal? You who commit a doubt, you would say do not commit a doubt. Do you commit a doubt? <clears throat> you who have has idols, do you rob temples? So having seen this, he is now turning it upside down. The message of God the message of the word of God is a personal message. It applies to the individual. The first church it brings to them are you teaching yourself? So are you good at running other people's lives and not running your own life? Do you teach others how much they need to wait on the Lord, how much they need the Lord, and you yourself are not waiting upon them? Are we let's take it to a personal level. What is it that you're telling others to do that you are not applying to self? And this is a very provocative statement that applies to everyone. It applies to preachers of who am one. 
Chiko makubabuli zinganzili omu kwa It applies to us as parents. Nothing haba zaddi. What are we telling our children? Bichibye tubuli raba ana. Are we telling them not to procrastinate and that we do procrastinate? Tubalabu loku baba gaya avu nga atefe tuliba gaya avu. So we need to look at what it is that I'm instructing others to do. Wete geleza chichicho obuli raba no kola. And ask yourself the question. Soka webu uzi. Am I? teaching myself. Today we have so many people who teach others that they need Christ in their lives. That they need to get saved. Which is true. But you who is preaching, have you received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Yesu wa muaniri zango muloko zira mukama wao. That is very interesting. Echo church do wazi ku. Then Paul is goes on to say, you who preach. Naga katigua jivuli ra. That you shall not steal, do you steal? Toba anga na yekuba. And what is he pointing out here? Chichi chalaga. He is taking them back. Abazayo. To the eighth commandment. Eri take eri omuna. He's trying to show them something. That what applies to others applies to you also. So you may not physically be stealing people's property. But what, what about God's glory? When it comes to give God the glory that is due to him, due you take the glory? Are you receiving the glory for yourself? I mean, those moments when you applauded for doing a good work. Who receives the glory? Which head are you crowning? Is it yours or is it the one of Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? We are living at a time where so many people are taking the honor and the glory to themselves and don't pass it on to the one who graciously saved them. To the one in whom we live, we move and have our being. To the one to whom we owe our existence. The one to whom we owe our very life. The one to whom we should give all that is due to then he asks the third question. Do you commit adultery? You who say thou shalt not commit adultery. Now, when we talk about adultery, Jesus takes it to the other degree. He says when you look at a woman, and in your mind, desire to have lust after that woman. Lust after that man. You have committed that adultery. You have fornicated. That's a degree which he raises the moral bar. And he does not bring it down. He has left it at that level. Now his Paul says, you who are saying do not do this, are you doing it yourself? He brings the fourth charge, which is robbing temples. He says, yes, you don't, you don't love idols. But he says, don't you rob temples? What is he trying to say here? He's trying to point out something. You see, you may not have physical idols. But how about the idols of your heart? What are those things that you have allowed in life to be more important than God? You see, when we talk about an idol, 
It is anything that you love more than God. Anything that you fear more than God. Anything that you serve more than God. Is an idol. It may be something, it may be someone. It may be intrinsically good. But the moment you place primary importance over God, if you give to God, to men, what you should only give to God, then that is idolatry. And anything can be idolatry. A family can become an idol. Your work can become your idol. Ministry can become an idol. And your health can become an idol. Family can become an idol. At the end of the day, we need to be cognizant of what is God's position in this. And there having understood that, then Paul brings the judgment. Why this is important? You know the law, you know what you ought to do, but you are not applying it yourself. Why is there a judgment? He says, for you who boast in the law, do you dishonor God through breaking the law? What is he trying to say? He's saying, by you not practicing what you preach, you are dishonoring. And by dishonoring God, you are breaking the law. You say you make you make boast about this. But in not applying the very law you're preaching, you are dishonoring God. And by dishonoring God, you are breaking the law. So, what is he trying to say here? You two are a law breaker. And because you are a law breaker, Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. So, because you are a law breaker, you are under the curse of the law. Because you have broken the law. So the curse of the law is death. And because you have broken the law, then you are under death. So when you break God's law, you've not made a simple mistake. That you are going to correct. No, when you break God's law, you are a lawbreaker. You have violated the law of God. You have dishonored God. You are on an offender to the law. Therefore, you are guilty before the law and you are condemned by the law. So, anyone who breaks the law dishonors God. So, dishonoring God, what does it mean? It means when we honor other things more than God, then we are dishonoring God. So that means we are placing importance on someone or something else other than God. So having done that, we 
are under condemnation. Awo tuli wansi wo musango. And why are we under condemnation? Wachi tuli wansi wo musango. And I'm speaking to that one who rejoices in the law. Ngambo ye ye nyumiriza mkuma abateka. Who believes you can meet God's requirement by observing the law. Ngorozo so kutu ukiriza evi intubi amateka kakatonda muga kuma. It cannot happen. Techisoboka. And because you are, you are not meeting every requirement of the law. Wanga tusobo la kutu ukiriza bulibibanji wa mateka. You are a lawbreaker. Uli mmenye wa mateka. And because you are a lawbreaker, you are under the curse of the law. Wango menya amateka oze oli wansi wech wa wech wa amateka and why is that rachi because god is blasphemed wa kato erinya lya katonda livolebwa among gentiles mubama wanga because of you kuluruo what is paul saying here paul ategeza paul is actually going back to isaiah 52 azeyo muisa ya 5 verse 5 and bringing that now to the new testament a to try and drive the point home that when a law is broken when god's law is broken it doesn't end with you there is a chain that has been put into motion and this involves those who don't know the law and those who don't know the law because of you not meeting all the requirements end up blaspheming god because of you and as it is written so your charge is what you have done and you leading others to do the same so you dishonor god so when we dishonor god we lead others to blaspheme the same god now remember the one who has received the law who is supposed to be the guide to the blind so he's actually blaspheming god to the blind so the one who is supposed to be the light in the darkness is now dragging them into the darkness of blasphemy. So the one who is supposed to correct those that are foolish now drags them further down the path of foolishness. Why? Because it, the, the heart has not been transformed. So it is not just you knowing. It is you being able to apply. It is you being able to meet every requirement. And we know that we cannot meet the requirements of God's law. To the dots. But I have good news for you. Jesus Christ has met every requirement of the law. To the dot. And when we place our faith in him, then under the law we are perfected. Then we are given a new heart. We are given the Holy Spirit. The law of God is written in our hearts. And we are empowered to fulfill everything that God requires. You see, this is what is interesting. If you don't do that, you continue to live outward. 
we yongero kutambula mu mulujude not meeting god's requirements ngatotu ukiriza katonda byako banja don't have the empowerment to meet god's bar of righteousness toina buyinza kutukiriza omutindo gwo kutukirifu katonda gwe yasawu because you are unable tosobola and you move without any conviction of sin otambula toli mukulumirizibwa lwachibi there is no need of repentance in your life teli bweta bumukwene nyamubulamu you continue in that path where you don't deny yourself anything you are guided to everything notambulia mukubo nga buli kirungi ne kibi tesobola kwerekereza otwala kitwale you don't humble yourself before god the way to was a maso ga katonda you have you may be a religious person you have that form of religiosity oyizanga kungulo labikango mu nadini but there is nothing godly about you neteri ko chabwa katonda kugwe why because you are lacking the key element kubango tolina ekinyuso ekisinga and this is the faith in Christ Jesus kwe kukiriza mu Kristo Yesu when we talk about his accomplished work buli wetu ogera kubia tukolera byonna his accomplished work includes fulfilling the law e minimu jonaje yatukiriza mulimu no kutukiriza mateka so what is it that we learn today chiche tuigalero three things bisat to you that has never believed the gospel kateri gwenga tonna ba kukiriza enjiri eno this is what you need to know chino cho ino kumanya with the law or without the law oboli la mateko oboli wabweli wa mateka you are guilty umusango oliko umusango the only requirement that you need choke kibanji bwache wetaka humble yourself as a sinner weto wazengo muono bless your faith in Christ Jesus take a kukiriza ko mu Kristo Yesu as your savior and your lord ngomulokozi wera mukamawo become born again nokoka ozali bwe bujja and it will be well with you awo kijja kuba bulungi secondly ekyo kubiri this is what we need to know tuino kumanya kino that having received christ butwa malo kuwebwa kristo we are bound to walk a walk of obedience tuino kutambulira mutukutambulo kwo kugonda faith okukiriza is a root Church, we that produces the shoot the fruit of obedience we obedience to god's word you see you may say the facts are not adding up wenzo gaba na ye bintu ngate bigatta gatta your faith is not in the facts okukiriza ko te kuli mu mazima gana gola bikako your faith is in the word. Okukiriza ko kuteke mu kigambo. So when you place your faith in the word. Bote okukiriza ko mu kigambo. Obey what the word says. No go under the kigambo. Then your life obulamu bwo is empowered to reflect the gospel that you share with others. Owe bwo buyinza na amanyo okufuka omusana gwenjiri eri abalala. So then you become a light. No fuke njuba. And Jesus said the light that is lit, a lamp that is lit is put on a lampstand. Yes, you are giving the tabaza e kumidwa ko muliro bajiteka ku nguru kwa kwa kiza abantu bonna. That it may give light to everyone. Buli omemu wetitanga. And he say so let your light. Kati nawe leke kitanga ala cho. Shine before men. Cha kire mu bantu that they may see your good works. Balabe bikolwa bye bino glorify your father who is in heaven. Bagulumize kitawa ali. May I point out Okulage. that your works ebikolwabyo e, point people to who your father is biraga abantu kitawo yani and i you understand Ote so geda. what is it whatever you are doing today bulicho nacho okola who is it pointing it to kiraga chikutwa chikutsonga mwani to whom is it pointing people to as your father abantu kibalaga nti kitawo yani the third one echo kusatu is the importance of bearing witness bwe bukulu obwo kujulira with others concerning the word of god eri abalala ku kigambo cha katonda we receive this truth 
bwetutu alama zimagano it is not for us to hold sigafe kwetirikira it is good news gano mauli de malunji it is news that has to be shared gana mauli oyino gaugira ko why Rwaji. because like we have seen ngabwe tulabye those under the law abali wansi wa mateka under condemnation nabo bali wansi wo musango like so last week those without the law nebali abatali we abatali na mateka are still under condemnation nabo bali wansi wo musango what is the way out na yekubo liririwo kuona jesus christ yesu christo the way the truth and the life yekubo ge mazima bwe bulamu therefore if you are watching us today what you have never surrendered your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You may have been stumbled by an, the acts of some pastor or some believer. Place your faith in Jesus Christ. Okukiriza kokuteke mu Kristo Yesu. He is the way to the Father. Kubanga liye kube eri kutwala eri kitafu. Your life will be changed. But most importantly, you condemnation by God. Omusango katonda gwasala will be overcome. Bujja kubanga gukujidwako. Why don't you say this prayer? Dawe sale no. Say father. Kitange. King of glory. Kabako wechitiwa. The creator of the universe. Omutonzi wensi. You sent Jesus Christ as the savior of mankind. Watuma Yesu Kristo ngomulokozi wa abantu and I am a sinner. Ndi muono. I need a savior in my life. Neta ngomulokozi mubulamu bwa Jesus. Yesu save me. Ondokoli this day. Lero cleanse me. Ntukuza purify my heart. Nazo tukuza mutima kwange. Ompa mutima wa mujja. Let me start again with you. Ntandike buto nawe through all eternity. Emirembe jonna I believe that you are the savior. Zikiriza gwe mulokozi wa abantu and I invite you in my life. Kwaniriza mubulamu bwange. As my savior, gwe mulokozi wange. My personal lord. Era mukama wange. Thank you for saving me. Gwe baloroko ndokola. Fill me with your spirit. Onzijuze no moyo and empower me. Ompomba amani to live. Ntambulenga a life that is pleasing to you. Mubulamu obukusanyosa. Thank you lord. Mukama we bali in Jesus name. Mulinye lya Yesu. Amen. If you say that prayer from the bottom of your heart. You have been saved. There is a number on your screen. Please call. Jikubeko. They will be giving you instructions. On how to begin again. On this new journey of faith. For those that have believed in Christ Jesus. We owe it to ourselves. To be examples. To be the light. Of what it means to live. A life of obedience to the word of God. So that the nations. So that others do not dishonor God because of our conduct. May God empower you. May God bless you as you live for him. From Dominion Church, it's been a pleasure having you today. Until we meet again, Shalom.